Welcome back to Sound 101. I'm Andrew from Deity Microphones, and today we're going to be diving into timecode. Now, I know timecode can feel very intimidating to a beginning filmmaker, but don't worry, by the end of this video, we are going to take all the mystery out of timecode. Now, before we dive deep into this, we probably need to talk about what is timecode. Well, it's pretty simple. Let's see how that comes into play in pre-production with producer Moses over at CinePax. Hey guys, we are at City Pack Studio with producer Moses. We're down here in LA on set of his latest production, and we're gonna ask him a bunch of questions. So Moses, let's talk the beginning pre-production. We need time code on a set, but how do we convey information from you to the people you're hiring? What are some of the kind of questions that we need to be talking about at the very beginning? Absolutely. Uh, so in pre-production, as we're gearing up for our shoot, you're having these conversations with the cinematographer, the director. The three questions you want to ask is, how many cameras are we shooting on, right? Because that's going to determine how many audio boxes we need. Cables are going to make the world of a difference. And so whatever camera house our camera team is prepping at, usually they'll have one of every type of cable. And so that's part of the pre-production is we want to make sure that we have the right cables, which is usually triggered by what cameras are we using. Secondly, do we have a smart slate? Smart slate is going to be able to take all the information from all three cameras, digitally display it right on that smart slate, which is going to help in post. The last question is what are our frame rates? Okay. So we always want to ask what the frame rates are because we want to make sure that the audio box communicating to the cameras, communicating to the smart slate, all of that needs to be in sync. Who on a production is selecting the frame rate? Is it you, the producer? Is it the cinematographer? Is it the post supervisor? Hands down, it's always going to be the cinematographer. Sometimes it might come from the director, but if you remember, what's the cinematographer's job is to bring the director's vision to life. And so if that director knows that there is a sequence or a scene or anything in particular that's going to need to be slow motion, higher frame rates, then that cinematographer is going to know what camera to pick, right? Because not all cameras perform well at a high frame rate or at the same resolution. So cinematographers, most likely, they're the ones that are going to pick the frame rates dependent on what the director wants. And again, frame rates, that's known about like probably a week or two out before the project. Yeah. So in that same kind of questionnaire that you have with your producer about how many cameras, what frame rate and everything, you're gonna have all that well in advance so you can be prepped for your shoot. Thank you, Moses, for giving us this time. We know you got a shoot to get to. It's good to see you, man. Awesome. Now we know what kind of questions we should be asking our producer when we get the phone call to be hired. Things like how many and what kind of cameras, what is our frame rate, and are we using a timecode slate? Now let's go talk to production sound mixer Ty to find out how all that is gonna get used in production. So what is it we need to do first and foremost in terms of communication? Who are we talking to on set? That would be the first AC because that person is going to help us put the time code onto the camera. When it comes to time code and call times, how are they related? Sometimes you'll be in call the same time with camera and other time you might be called like half an hour after camera. Either case, if you are called with the camera call time, the camera may not be ready right away for you to put the time code box on. It's best to wait till the camera is built, then you can hand off your time code boxes. Okay, so we've got our time code boxes right here, prepped, ready to go and out, but they're not synced yet. How are we gonna actually do the sync for a set? Well, that's very simple. All we have to do is we go into our app and hit sync all. And that way, all our units are sync. And so yeah. this one can go into the sound bag this one can go to cam A, cam B, and also our slate is also synced for the second AC to work. Assassino, pangulot, strangulata, spaghetti, tortellini, ravioli, zucchini, parmigiana, take seven. Mark, Mark. Now let's talk about cables. We have a lot more cables than cameras. Why do we have extra cables? You always need to have some spares because if you have one, you have none. So always good to bring some extra. Now do we also have a couple of spare timecode boxes in here also? 
Yes, because in case you run out of battery or something comes down to one of the boxes, you always have one for backup. Always have one for backup. Plus, a spare camera could show up at the last minute. That's true. Which the producer goes, oh, yeah, yeah, the seat cam. You don't remember us talking about it? And you're like, no, but I have a backup. So let's talk one last thing. What's best practices for time code? Let's, we've synced up in the morning. We're coming back from lunch. What do we do? It's always best to rejam at lunch or at least check it, you know? And it's always easy to take the um, Tamco slate, put it in front of the camera and snap a picture at the viewfinder to see if, if the number syncs up. Now, the critical thing with that is all cameras are gonna have some kind of latency from real life to what their LCD display is. So if you have consistent latency through multiple photos, one, you now know the latency of your camera, and two, you know whether or not you're in sync. Thank you so much, Ty, for showing us how timecode works in production and some best practices. Let's take that footage, let's go over to Transported Audio, who's the post house who's gonna be handling this project. Well guys, we are now in post-production with Eric. Eric, share with the guest out there a little bit about what your background is. So I run uh, Transport Audio, where we do post-production sound for uh, lots of videos for Amazon Prime, uh, including featurettes and EPKs for The Boys, The Wheel of Time, Reacher. We've worked on lots of feature documentaries, including one for Brian Wilson of The Beach Boys and lots of other types of projects. I mean, it is safe to say you know what post-production is all about. So we're gonna to get to the heart of it. Why is timecode so important for post? So timecode keeps a universal uh, language for everyone to know here is exactly in sync and there's no way of slipping that in a way that would make anything seem off to the audience. I like that phrase, universal language. Everyone is speaking the same language. We all know what we're talking about. There's other ways of syncing that have been done in the past like waveform syncing, a little bit less popular than it is today. But let's talk about why timecode is better than waveform syncing. Well, the waveform syncing, you're assuming that every mic is in the exact same position and next to each other and that there's no distance or reflections or anything to account for. Timecode gives us data, an actual hard number of exactly when something starts and when something is in sync with the next file. And everything is exactly precisely in digital sync and there's no slipping, there's no accounting for distance or anything like that. Yeah, I think accounting for distance, the time that sound travels is the latency that you're gonna be off if you do waveform syncing. Yes, yeah, no question. But when you have something like timecode, you have a hard number to know. Every department knows this is sync and there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it and everyone can communicate that around the world instantly to know that is your number. Let's talk about the number side, the time, the effort, and more importantly, the money that can be spent in post if you don't have time code. Uh, studios expect things faster and faster nowadays. If you can't get deliver in time and on budget, you're dead in the water. So um, it's important to be able to get to that creative process as quickly as possible. And what time code does is it eliminates the guesswork, eliminates a ton of time at the beginning of setting up your project and organizing and make sure that you are in a, able to jump into that creative process right away. And in today's modern world, timecode is on more and more camera side. And here in post, everything supports timecode, right? No question, yeah. I mean, in Pro Tools, like one of the first things you see at the top is a big number. You can bring up a bigger window of that because when producers, directors in the back of the room, they wanna give notes, they're giving notes based on a particular time within the cut. If they say, remember that scene or that moment where that one line right. they're happens? They're taking notes on their iPad or they've got a piece of paper with a list of, of time code yeah. and then notes next to that. They're, they're keeping logs of stuff. Your script supervisor on your set, all the notes they take are time code notes related. If they're using the right program uh, in reality TV and in documentary work, you'll have what's called a logger whole job, just time code notes. Oh yeah, I mean, if, if, if people aren't using that information, again, slows everyone down. Like if, if a director said, what's that scene where that guy, remember that moment where, and if you don't remember, you're, you're going and you're sifting through, you're looking for things. Without time code, you, you don't know what, what's up, what's down, left, right. Like you really have no way of knowing how exactly in sync you can get things. So I've got one last question for you. Any tips for anyone out there starting their first time, doing their first production with time code? Have an open conversation with your picture editor before you get your files. Make sure that the picture editor and assistant editor even know exactly what you need in order to get started and that everyone's in sync on, okay, what's the start time code of your quick time? Are we starting at one hour? Two seconds before the one hour mark. So that time code is 00595800. And you'll see that is, if we add two seconds, it would become one hour. So if 
I go ahead and just select all, Command A, and hit plus 2.0 for two seconds. You'll see if I go to that start frame, it is indeed one hour. Is there a two pop? What's your sync point and where is the video starting? And you can always communicate in terms of these numbers because these are universal numbers. Thank you, Eric, for sitting down and giving us a small portion of your time. If you guys, though, still have questions like how to actually do the syncing itself, we have tutorials right up here for you guys right now. Well guys, it's that time of the episode where I give one of you lucky fans a VLOV just like Sonny Nagiri, who won a VLOV for telling us this comment right here and started this whole episode process. If you have a comment for us down in the section below, and the idea is for a future episode and we use it, you also could win a VLOV. Of course, hit that subscribe button and hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss an update on this channel. And of course, if you like this episode, hit the like button. It really helps us with the YouTube algorithm. I'm Andrew from Needy Microphones. Thank you for watching.